it's extremely close. Okay. It's extremely close. I think it's it's if almost close to a toss up. It's it's close to a coin flip. And uh, you know, I think maybe Sif cut by a tiny bit just because he has a few extra ramp options to get that Nissan into play. I'll tell you one thing that I've seen consistently here, and that's the player who gets off to that quick start with those early ramp spells and gets the advantage down soon is the one who has the big edge here. Yeah, I was I was actually speaking to Reed Duke earlier as he was watching the earlier mirror match of William Jensen against Gabriel Nassif. And, you know, the most important thing in the matchup, the most the, the key to the matchup is getting those mana creatures out into play early. Whoever gets more of those early will generally be the one who comes out on top. You have the mana sinks, you get that Nissan to play early, or you can just start chaining Hydra Kraysai as well. Table mm -hmm. Passage kicks things off here for Sifka on the bottom part of your screen. I'll remind you once again, this is elimination. Everything on the line for these players, and we're going to see the whole match in its entirety. This is game number one. And take a look at Andrea Mangucci's hand here, right? He's got Gilded Goose, Paradise Druid, Leaf Kindred, and the Hydra Crisis. So he's well ahead here in terms of just who gets off to the better start with the ramp, with the ramp creatures. Yeah, S Sifka, <coughs> a little bit slower of a start. There's a Questing Beast into hand now for Mangucci. He's going to play an untapped hollowed fountain. That's going to preserve that food token on the battlefield so that he can use his Gilded Goose to gobble it up a little bit later. Yeah, and we've seen players in this matchup, I, they already know that the mana creatures are the most important thing. We've seen Andrea Mangucci use Oko Thief of Crowns to aggressively shut down Gilded Goose. Just turn it into 3-3. I don't care if you attack my Oko, I just just cannot have you get that Nissa into play on turn three. So that is something that we could potentially see from Sifka. Alternatively, he could just run out of Deputy of Detention here to get that Gilded Goose, or perhaps even just a food token off the battlefield. You see he's contemplating his options. Detention or Oko? That's the question. And it looks like he's going to play out Deputy of Detention here. Only legal target. Well, I guess there's the food token, and he's going to go for that. That gives him some permanent value <laughs> as well. Wow, Deputy of Detention, instead of eating the food, sent it packing. Order to go. That is brutal. Big draw here, though, from Andrea Mangucci. O Oko, Thief of Crowns off the top here. Great three drop, consistent source of food. So the Gilded wow. Goose is turned on once again. Wow, that was a huge drop for him, because otherwise his turn looked pretty bad. Just play a Leafkin Druid. So he's used Fable Passage to search up that forest before passing the turn back. And here's an Oko for both players now. Sifka plays an Oko of his own. What is he going to do with it? Yeah, I wonder if he's going to turn his Deputy of Detention into a 3-3 to just start applying pressure on Oko. He can make a food, but it's not going to be doing a whole lot here. And it's going to be a lot harder for him to slow down Andrea Mangucci's mana here because if he turns Paradise Druid or Gilded Goose into a 3-3, Andrea simply would still just need a land here to play Nissa who shakes the world. Of course, we know that Andrea doesn't have that in hand, but that's the key card in the matchup that both players are very well aware of. You also see these tempo plays that the players have access to using Oko to make their own creatures or sometimes artifacts into 3-3s three and start attacking opposing planeswalkers. Never easy, though, in these matchups. Uh, I've, I've found that the, the Oko mirrors have a lot of play to them, specifically around Oko Thief of Crowns. This is not a card that you just play and just do the same pattern every time. You always have a lot of options. Absolutely. And yeah, we're going to see that play I just mentioned here. So Deputy of Detention is going to become a 3-3 three, three Elk Let's and start bashing, trying existence. to keep the opposing Oko in check or protect the Oko that he's got. He's just going to okay. leave it home. So now Mangucci does have the option here of swapping his food or swapping a creature with that Deputy of Detention that's on the battlefield. Yeah, and you can see why Sifka didn't want to attack. He would knock the opposing Oko down to three, but then lose his own Oko in the process. Not an acceptable transaction there for Sifka. Yeah, a lot of interesting options here for Andrea Mangucci. He can run out Deputy of Detention. He can also just slam a Questing Beast and maybe turn one of his food to turn the food token that he has in play into a 3-3 three, three. And, and attack Oko. Alternatively, he can also use the food and swap. It looks like he's just going to use it for mana here. 
Okay, this is nice. And by doing what he just did here, this ensures that Oko dies. He gave Stanislav Sivka a Gilded Goose. Which is something important, right? right? I mean, that is not something that Andrea Mangucci is going to be happy to have to give away. But for the exchange of getting Oko off the battlefield now, he'll take it. Because goodness sakes, getting Oko off the battlefield feels impossible sometimes with how much loyalty he has. Yeah, absolutely. That said, this is the big hitter. Nissa Who Shakes the World is the card that these players are striving to ramp out as quickly as possible. But Andrea might have enough pressure here to be able to potentially get that Nissa off the battlefield. He does just have Deputy of Detention, which you can cast to get Nissa off. But he might also just be able to apply some pressure here. We got that Questing Beast here that can attack the Nissa. Sifka could either just choose to have Nissa take four or trade with that forest. He can also attack with that Deputy of Detention. And he could potentially turn that Paradise Druid into a 3-3 as well and attack. All right, he's going to go for the Deputy of Detention. He's going to target the Goose. Always interesting when you target something that you actually own, you'll get it back. Yeah, so this tells me that he's going to turn his Paradise Druid into a 3-3 and attack with everything. By doing so, six, at least six points of damage will get through and that Nissa will die. That is big because you do not want Sifka to untap with Nissa who shakes the world and cast any number of the heavy hitters that he could have. Of course, the four copies of Hydrate Crisis, but as you can see in his hand, even that one copy of Agent of Treachery. Yeah, that is absolutely huge. And you see that pattern over and over again. If given the option, the players will give up almost any amount of board presence to get rid of a Nissa to, to prevent that exact thing from happening. Oh dear. Of course, the Questing Beast is free just to attack the life total of Stanislav Sifka. That's exactly what happened. So another big swing. We've seen this time and time again. Ooh, Deputy of Detention here. Uh, it feels like you can be in a pretty good position, and then you pass a turn back, and you're behind. <laughs> yeah. And then you need to do everything you can to fight back in the other direction, and that's what's been happening. It's It's been, comp yeah, it, it, th these turns have just been so swingy. It's yeah. like, I mean, look at the board right now. <laughs> this, uh, untap my land, play Oko, steal your thing. Okay, well, I can do that too. And, and it's just so back and forth. It's so tempo-oriented too. It's just so important to establish a good board presence so that you can have the necessary pressure to attack your opposing Planeswalkers. Because if you don't, you're just going to lose. You're just going to lose. And you know, that, that, that also goes back to the point we were making earlier, Paul, about Nissa who shakes the world's static ability, doubling up your mana from your forest. So huge because one way to get ahead on tempo is just to play two things in a turn that you would have only normally been able to play one. Yeah, I wonder if Sifka's looking to play at that Deputy of Detention, maybe get that questing beast off the battlefield, or maybe just hit both of the Deputy of Detentions and hope that there's no removal spells. So the Gilded Goose will come back, and it's on Andrea Mangucci's side, but that was a two for one here. We're going to see a big old crisis here from Mangucci. Oh, yes, we are. X equals four. Let's see what he finds with his two cards. Well,. Not a whole lot. Welcome to Basically the a forest. Questing Beast once again in the red zone. No reasonable blocks here for Sifka. So yeah. he's just going to have to take it on the chin. Down to eight he goes, and it's a Gilded Goose off the top. Yeah, and so, you know, this game, Andrea Mangucci has done such a fantastic job of making sure that there's enough pressure on the battlefield and prioritizing removing Planeswalkers over everything. Uh-oh, here's Oko, Thief of Crowns. Perhaps a questing beast. No. It's going to be actually the deputy of detention that ends up becoming an elk once again. Important to note that the deputy trigger will still happen, even if it dies as an elk. Those cards that are underneath it, oh, they remember. <laughs> and then that that will be very bad news for Sivka. There are two Deputy of Detentions underneath the Elk Deputy of Detention. Mm -hmm. 
Speaking of deputy of detention, there's one in hand for Manguchi as well. <laughs> oh no, is he just gonna <laughs> chain these things together? This gets a little bit weird, yeah. but here it comes, deputy okay. of detention. Oh, he's no. just gonna get rid of the... He doesn't want any part of that. The goose, yeah. <laughs> Oko's going to wake up. And, you know, keep in mind, Sivka's down to eight here. Yeah, he may just be facing lethal even. There's four. Four in the air is getting through guaranteed. He can chump block the beast, trade off for the food so or one of the others, and go to one. He's one short. But there's not. I guess they're, yeah, this is a really tough position here for Sivka. As you mentioned, you know, this has been a tempo thing. Both deputies come back. Yeah, but at one life at this point, because if Kazdek doesn't really play any sweepers, mm -hmm. there's just no real card he can draw here to get him out of this. Rules get a little wonky here as well. <laughs> there's deputy detention trigger goes on the stack. Manguchi's the active player, so his goes on the stack first, but that means that it's going to resolve last. And that means that Sifka gets to be the one to take care of business. And the way the deputy's templated, if it's gone by the time the stack resolves, just nothing happened. Right. So this pa the turn gets past the Sifka, but it's got to be too overwhelming for him at this point. Coming back from being this far behind for the Simic deck is very difficult. They just don't have a, a sweep or a reset. Yeah, he's sitting like at one life here. He can gain some life. He can play out a Nissa. If he does, he's tapped out. The Goose is tapped. He has a 3-3. Three, three. That's not going to be enough here. He can block two creatures and gain three life. He can switch something with the Oko. Maybe swap a food, but yeah, I think he's just too far behind here. That's right. So Sifka says, well, there's no way out for me. I'm going to have a sip of water and scoop him up. Andrea Mangucci wins game number one, trying his best to stave off elimination. And he's one to the good here with a win. Mangucci really starting to make a name for himself in these smaller field tournaments. I mean, this was pretty big. There were 68 players, but not as big as a, as a full-on Mythic Championship at the paper level where you can get up to, you know, 400, even 500 players sometimes, depending. Yeah, and I like Sifka's sideboard strategy here. He, bringing, he brings in the three copies of Wicked Wolves from the sideboard. Very, very important as a way to get detention mage, sorry, uh, Deputy of Detention off the battlefield. And also boarding out his own copies because of the Wicked Wolves on Andrea Mangucci's side. Unrelated question, Paul. What was um, Deputy of Detention's playtest name? Yeah, I keep calling it the Detention Mage because oh. in playtesting, oh. its name was Detention Mage. Interesting. <laughs> So every now and then you're gonna you're gonna have me say something uh, an incorrect card name, that was likely the playtest name. <laughs> Are there any playtest names that you uh, you wouldn't be allowed to say on air? Possibly, I'm hoping to Whoa. minimize those mistakes. All right, well, so. I won't lead you down that path. <laughs> then. Come back, let's get back on the match here. Andrea Mangucci up one game to zero over Stanislav Sifka, who is looking at his opening hand. He's kept it, but it's missing one key ingredient here. There's no ramp. There's no ramp. It is on the slower side. No once upon a time to find one of those mana creatures. He could find a Paradise Druid for his second turn. Growth Spiral would also be great. He does get a Scry. Here's Temple of Mystery to kick things off. Once upon a time. That's good. And That's you know what? That's still free. Yeah. So that could absolutely become a two-mana ramp spell. Speaking of... There's a Once Upon a Time for Mangucci, perhaps looking for a <laughs> Gilded oh, Goose and he hit one. Card. Hello, friend. The Goose is, as they say, on the battlefield. There is Once Upon a Time. And he didn't find one this time. In fact, boy, not a lot for him there. Uh, the extra copies of Hydra Increases aren't really what he needs here. So he's just going to take the Temple of Mystery to help shape his draw going forward. He really wants to... Jeez. Put a permanent onto the battlefield next turn. Yep. Oko, a ramp creature, and that's what he wants. So so because he has plenty of plays after turn four, right? He's got that Wicked Wolf on four, he's got Nissa on five, and Hydra Crisis potentially on six. So I don't think Once Upon a Time is the thing that he wants to look for. I think he should likely just take his chances here and just hope to draw a relevant card to play next turn. All right, down it goes to the bottom of the library. Pass the turn. A very slow start here for Stan Sifka. And boy, he's got a lot of work to do. The question is, 
how quickly can Manguchi get out to one of those insurmountable leads? Right. Because the one thing that Oko doesn't do is draw you cards. <laughs> it's all about on-board manipulation here. But uh, Manguchi needs to find a heavy hitter. His dream, of course, is, is Nissa. Th that's the card that he'd love to find. Yeah, but Sefka already falling behind here. No plays for the first three turns. He got a couple of scries. He looked five deep with Once Upon a Time. He was a favorite once he saw that Once Upon a Time to find something. But, but now, Andrea... His Once Upon a Time, finding him the Gilded Goose, allowing him to play out this turn to Oko Thief of Crowns. And, you know, he can continue adding to the board here, right? He does have that Krasis. Next turn, he can put another Accelerant onto the battlefield and the Leaf King Druid, draw some cards. So things looking very, very good here for, for Andrea. Stan with a little, perhaps a bluff here. He's going to play a tap land after tanking it out. Really, he didn't have anything to think about on that turn. He even went all the way down to the rope. And, you know, if you noticed, he kind of clicked through the rest. Like, yeah, I've got an instant, I swear. Oh, dear. Perhaps trying to convince Manguchi that he's got a counter spell in hand. In the meantime, though, Oko, Thief of Crowns, getting rowdy here. Waking up that food, it bashes in for three. A Leaf can Druid and a land join the battlefield, and then Manguchi's just going to pass the turn back. Well, Sifka does have the more powerful cards in hand. He, do he does have that Nissa, so he might be able to stabilize. He's going to play this Wicked Wolf, which is going to be quite strong. It's going to get one of those mana creatures off the battlefield and put a body on the battlefield so that he doesn't fall too far behind from the attacks with that 3-3 food token. The question is, does he want to get that Leaf Kindred or the Gilded Goose? That Leaf Kindred guarantees you mana every single turn, and if you do develop a wide enough board, it'll generate you two mana. Well, I got to say, you know, as slow as this draw has been for Sifka, he's now hit sort of the, the meaty part of his curve, and he's still at 15. He gets to go Wicked Wolf into Nyssa into some combination of Krasis and Wolf, assuming that things go well for him. That, that's the kind of power hitters in the middle part of the game that he can use to really get ahead. He's going to take out the Leafkin Druid and pass the turn back. These are big turns now. This is the, the you know, two to three turns that are going to decide this game. Yeah, but now, Andrea, that Oko is going to just be extremely powerful Amazing. here. He can just steal things at this point. He can he can play out that Gilded Goose that he drew, give, a, give Stanislav Sivka food, trade it for the Wicked Wolf, continue to apply pressure, or he can just run out his own Wicked Wolf, create a food token, and turn it into a 4-4. So a lot of good options here for Andrea. But, of course, Sivka does have that Nissa. But given that Oko was in play on turn two, yep. you know, it, th there's just going to be a huge it's army of creatures that can potentially just take that Nissa out. Yeah. I think we're going to see Wicked Wolf just gobble up the other Wicked Wolf on the other side of the battlefield. That's going to clear the way for three damage this turn. But next turn, things are really ugly, especially if Sifka was planning on just playing Nissa. Agent of Treachery. Ah, he's had that both games. But the hard part for him has been untapping with Nissa so that he has that big mana bump and he can actually get the agent down. And you can see he goes into not like this mode. Yeah, think about it. it. Even if he runs out Nissa who shakes the world, sure, he can turn his land into a 3-3. But because Oko Thief of Crowns is approximately a million loyalty, he can just trade the Gilded Goose for the 3-3, then attack with both the Wicked Wolf and the 3-3 that's been transformed into a food to just take the Nissa out. And this is dead. Right. Yeah. So not a lot of great options here for Sifka. He could run out Wicked Wolf, maybe just kill a Gilded Goose. Gosh, it's, it's felt like Stanislav Sivka has been behind one turn this whole match, right? Like, he's just almost there, but he had this slow one. And then the last one is Manguchi, who was able to generate advantage after advantage, even after Sivka was doing powerful things. Well, I mean, we were talking about how the most important thing to do in this matchup is make sure you get those mana creatures out early. And both times, Sifka kept a hand with no acceleration. He had the slower draw. He had the slower cards in hand. And Andrea, however, you know, with the optimal start, getting that Gilded Goose early, getting those two mana creatures down to be able to just have more pressure on the battlefield to pressure those Planeswalkers. Think of how good this draw would have been for Sifka if that once upon a time hit a mana accelerator. I mean, right. he would be ahead Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. And now he is just getting ran over. Here comes Questing Beast with Oko at the ready still. 
And there's a Hydroid Crisis 2 to follow up for next turn. A Gilded Goose off the top is not what Sifka wanted to see here. Now he's down to four life. Does he have any options whatsoever? I guess the Crisis. He can play a 4-4 four, four Crisis here. That Go to him six. two, block the wolf. He dies? Then. He would die. He would die. Does he have any way out at all? Nissa Goose, crack a food. That's still not enough. He can play out a Nissa and a Crisis and a Goose. No, he doesn't have mana for that. Nope. No, no, So he does. He does. He would have access to four mana, so he could play a 1-1 one, one Crisis and a oh, Goose. Not another 1-1 one, one Crisis. I can't, I can't see another <laughs> one of those. That would actually keep him alive, though, would it not? No, I guess it wouldn't. Because he just wouldn't be able to crack a, a food in that scenario. And Questing Beast would kill him. Right. Yeah, maybe he sees a line here, but I'm not seeing a way out here for Stanislav Sivka. Certainly not long term, but we were just talking about next turn. OK, so it looks like he's going to make a 3-3 three, three and just play a Gilded Goose. And the 3-3 three, three can block the Questing Beast and the Gilded Goose can block the Wicked Wolf. Yeah, that's fine. And and with Oko turning the food into a 3-3, three, three, I suppose Sifka would survive? He, he would. He would be at one. But keep in mind, Oko... this is just not a long-term game plan that has any... I mean, not that I blame Sifka here, but... No, no, no. Th this is just dead, because Andrea Minguchi has the ability here to swap creatures, oh, right? Oh, he can just steal so, the temple? So he can just steal the temple and the questing beast will go in un unimpeded and yeah. Andrea Mangucci is going to have this. That's and, right. And keep in mind, these are elimination matches. Sifka's out if he loses this. That's right. And it looks like that's exactly the case here. He tried as hard as he could to prevent lethal this turn, but Mangucci, you see that look on his face, he's thinking it over, but I think he's just got it here. That is a Temple of Mystery, remember? That thing cannot tap for two mana. So the food's not a play. And he's just got Deputy of Detention. Any number of other ways to get the job done here. So all the blockers out of the way. Maybe also trying to play around Veil vale of Summer, seeing if he has it, running out the Deputy of Detention first. But Andrea Mangucci looks like he was just about to steal the land there, which would give him the win. And on our freeze frame here, I think that Stanislav Sivka's face kind of describes it all. <laughs> the look that of disappointment. Is not going to be a victory for him. I mean, I'm ready to call it for Andrea Mangucci oh, here yeah. Definitely. As, uh, as a winner of that round. Yeah. And, you know, Andrea, not only just with the aggressive starts, right? Of course, the mana creatures being the most important thing there. But just on top of that, over the course of the weekend, I've just been so impressed with Andrea just knowing exactly what he needs to do in this, frankly, extremely complex matchup, right? Yeah. Especially, as you said, with Oko, so many different modes, right? Shut off their mana, make a 3-3, three, three, attack their Planeswalkers. You know, what, what am I going to do with Nissa? What am I going to do with all the ramp? There's just so many different things that you could do. And Andrea just very deftly finding ways to just be the one with more resources after all these games. I've been super impressed by Andrea Mangucci. I, I think he's shown him himself to be a superb mid-range player. He's consistently been picking these decks up for standard for the last few years, and he knows how to maneuver through these. Congratulations to Andrea Mangucci for advancing here. Stanislav Sivka, the, the end, the, the run ends here, but wow, he's impressive, right? I mean, it kind of feels like he just shows up, figures it out, does super well, puts himself in contention, gets a top eight, and it's like I haven't even seen him play in, in quite a while, and he just shows up and smashes everybody. It's, it's really th th impressive. Th that's the thing, right? I mean, he, he just comes out of nowhere, and you have this house, right? We have Yvonne Flock, who, who's always kind of in that converse, conversation for Hall of Flame. You have Andre Strasky. You have all these great Czech players, and they just play whatever deck he gives them. He just goes, look, I built this deck. I think it's great. I put in the hours. You should play this. And you know what, you know what Strasky goes? Yeah, okay, I'll play it. Yeah, because 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 you know he he has probably just proven himself in playtesting to be that person who's just you know you can trust. It's like hey, you know they talked about Andrew Cunio for for that team where they're like okay he put in the time he said this deck was great we're gonna trust in him and and, and it's been working out and you know really really impressed with just 
the results that that house has been putting, and you know, just kind of all the innovations that San Francisco has has made in, in Magic. It's so hard to break standard, yes, right? Absolutely. It's so hard to come up with unique takes because there's so many hours being put into it, and Sifka just does it time and time again. Yeah, you know, it's funny. What it reminds me of is before a big event, sometimes the players, the, the pros that are testing together will actually get together in a house for a week or two prior and just play and play and play and play. They talk, they have meetings, they go over lists, they put in all the work. I think it's just like that all the time at their house. <laughs> it's just yeah. a mini version of that all the time. No, and there is a lot to be said about having just a house full of great gamers because you just, you know, even if you don't want to necessarily, you are just you just walk by, you go to the kitchen, and you see your friend battling, and you guys just start getting into it, and you just start playing. It's just, it, it's you, you just learn so much by absorbing and learning all the different ways that, you know, all the teammates in the house can play. Well, it looks like we've got those last couple of steps here. As predicted, Paul, though, it was Andrea, oh, wait, Andrea Gucci, won. Yeah, able to finish things off. So once again, we just want to say congratulations to Andrea Mangucci for keeping the dream alive here and advancing to the next stage. And once again, a great run by Stanislav Sivka. Always awesome to get a chance to watch somebody of his caliber play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, just always just impressed yeah. with... with the decks that he's been coming Same. up with. That when, when, when that team